Hey guys, so I'm going to do another chatty video with you. I'm praying and hoping that it's not going to be an hour long like the last one, hoping to cut that time in half. So um, wish me luck. <laughs> um, but today we're going to just talk about, I'm just going to color. Um, I don't think I'm going to get to making a card like I did last time. But whatever I color, I and I if I don't make a card, I will come back and at another video and finish off a card. If you're not into chatty videos or really care about what's going on with me, this isn't going to be the video for you. Um, but for those that are here, thanks for coming by. I wanted to give you an update on my hands and kind of things that have been going on. I really liked doing the last video and the comments were very nice. So I figure if you're watching, then you're obviously interested. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to be using Honeybee's, what is this called? Build a Bee. I've had this stamp set forever. I haven't used it yet, so I'm going to be using this. Um, but then I have a few other things here. The Beautiful Sentiment stamp set. Then I have the stencils. And then I have a die set. So I don't think I'll get to this because I'm pretty long-winded. But if not, then I'm going to bring these some of these, all of them, whatever, elements in to create a card in another video, like I said. But I'm going to go ahead and stamp these out. I'm going to do a little bit of watercoloring. This is some Arteza watercolor paper. And I'm going to be using some Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp the images out. Whatever I use today, the links will be listed below if you're interested. So like my last video, I had um, done it on a day where I had an interview to kind of keep my mind off. I had said that interviews really bum me out because you know it's a lot of pressure and then after the interview's over it's like I crash well guess what I had today <laughs> an interview so I don't know um, I don't know what to do <clears throat> I feel like the jobs I've gotten the interviews were just so good the the principal was so relaxed laid back it typically was just a one-on-one -on -one interview and these panel interviews just trip me up. And I don't know why. I don't know why. It's like my mind goes blank. If you ask me questions now with no pressure, I could answer them easily and perfectly. But I don't know what happens. So I don't know what I'm going to do as far as a job. Um, and you know, when you start doubting yourself, you're like, well... Well, Alicia, why did you leave your last job? You should have not left that because you didn't have another job lined up. But there's a reason why I left, and it's because my health was not good. The, the place was so stressful that I couldn't stay. But then, you know, look at me now. I'm stressed because I don't have a job. So I don't know what to do. But... Anyway, that's an update on the job search. A lot of people have been asking about my hands. So um, that's mostly why I wanted to do an update video or a chatty video is to give you guys an update on my hands. So I did go back to the, so I went to, I don't even know where I left off last time. Um, I was diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome and I was to wear the braces for a month overnight and during the day if I wanted to it wouldn't hurt so I did that and it did nothing so I went back to the doctor he recommended it recommended me to an orthopedic surgeon and oh okay so I saw this orthopedic surgeon that he recommended me to and the experience was horrible like um I didn't like the way I didn't like him <laughs> and he went he you know he ignored what my doctor had said that it could be, which was, I think, para, parathesia, that's not how you say it, of skin. Um, he didn't even acknowledge that, whatever that is. And he just went straight to surgery. And he kept talking about insurance and money. And he's like, you know, we'll do one hand. And by the time you get the second hand done, it'll be free. And it was just weird. And then I said, what about my inflammation? And he says, you're not, you don't have any inflammation. And then I was like, what about this? So you probably can't see it on camera, but I have like this bump. And it, it's gotten actually better. But across here, I have like these little like, you push them down, it feels like a gel pack. But they were there like when my hand was relaxed. 
Um, I said, well, what about these? And he goes, oh, I take that back. That is inflammation. And I'm like, whoa, okay. <laughs> um, which made me very concerned that he would just disregard what I said. But then when I pointed out, it's all of a sudden, oh, okay. So anyway, I was like, keep going. It's fine. You know, you need, okay, I'll get the surgery. Um, but before I do the surgery, I have to get an MRI on this hand because of that little bump. And then he was like, then you need to do an EMG. And I'm going to tell you it's not pleasant. And I'm like, what's an EMG? And he said, well, it's, you know, shocks. They have to shock you, test your nerves, whatever. So, like, I was almost to the point of tears. It was a bad day. This was all overwhelming. I was so tired. So it's kind of like all these things adding up. And I'm like, okay. And so, anyway, he leaves. Then this physician's assistant, I don't know what he was, um, comes in and won't even make eye contact with me. And he repeats basically everything. He's like, okay, you'll need an MRI and this and this, and never making eye contact with me. It was like he was nervous. So I'm thinking, dude, why are you nervous? <laughs> um, and so he left. Then he comes back in. Did I leave my paper in here? I'm like thinking you were only carrying one paper. <laughs> So that was weird. I'm like, okay, goofball. And then a lady, well, okay, so going back to the doctor, I'm going to do use some distress ink. This is what I'm going to use. See how it goes. I don't know. I'm going to try to incorporate wild honey. So anyway, going back to the doctor, I had asked him what the surgery entails. And he waved his hand and goes, oh, we'll talk about it later. But I do do it endoscopically. And at the time, I was like, okay. But then, you know, when I would leave, when I left, I was like, wow, he just blew off my question. Like, okay. Um, I, I, do I really want this doctor to perform surgery on me if he won't even answer my questions? There's no bedside manner. He was a little arrogant. Um, so anyway, this assistant, weird assistant, leaves, come, uh, leaves. Then the, um, a nurse, I don't know who she is, a lady comes in to set up the surgery. And she was fine. But the one thing that was annoying is that when I set up the appointment like a week previously, I gave him my insurance information. And she was like, I don't have your insurance information. It hasn't been verified. So I can't give you any costs. So she took my insurance card again, because it had already been taken previously, and made another copy or whatever. So I had no idea what any cost of anything was. Okay, well, the, the surgery's set up, whatever. I need to go schedule my EMG, which is the shocking of the, the nerves. So I go up to the front. I'm leaving. I go ahead and schedule that. And they're like, you need to pay $300 and blah, blah, blah for the EMG. You need to prepay. I'm like, here we go. And I go, okay, so I pay. And when I go to pay, the lady's like, you have a 400 and so-and-so dollar credit. I said, well, that's nice, but I've never been here before. So she was confused. And while she's trying to figure it out, there's a guy next to me checking out. And the lady that's helping him said, okay, we'll schedule you for your EMG. And I'm thinking, oh, he's getting the same thing too. You know, not really thinking, just whatever. Didn't think about it. He checks out, he leaves. So the lady checking me out asked that weird physician's assistant, that dude, do you have the original copy of the sheet she's looking off of that the doctor wrote on? And he says, yes, I put it in the tray. So he starts looking through the tray and she goes, don't worry about it, I'll find it. So he leaves. And then the girl, the worker, the girl next to the one helping me out that just helped that, that, out that guy, looked at her sheet of paper. She checked him out with my sheet of paper. <laughs> so that guy next to me was supposed to have the 400 and something dollar credit, but she was looking at my sheet as if it was his and gave me the credit. And First of all, she shouldn't have been at that in front of me. She should have pulled the girl aside and secretly had that conversation. 
Oh my God. And I was like, are you beep kidding me? <laughs> it's like all these red flags. <clears throat> You know, I'm freaking out about everything. And then I can't, I have these people that don't even know what the beep they're doing. So, whatever. I pay the 300 for the EMG and then I leave. And on the way home, oh yeah, that was the day I had a job fair and it was a complete joke. And so I was already screwed up with that. So then I'm going home and I'm like, this just this does not feel right. I don't feel right about this all, at all. Long story short, I canceled everything, asked for my money back because I told myself if somebody was telling me the story of everything I just went through, I would tell them to go running. So why am I trying to justify it? So anyway, I called the next day. I canceled everything, asked for my money back. It was a real easy process. Had to cancel the EMG, cancel the um, MRI. Thankfully, when my husband signed up for insurance, I'm on his insurance, for some reason he signed up for a PPO. I have no idea how that happened, but thank God. If you're in the United States, you want a PPO if at all possible. Typically, it's more money. So I just went online myself and found an orthopedic surgeon that's closer to me and has better reviews. So I went to go see him, this new one, and everything was fine. Um... He was okay. He, you know, he, he didn't blow my socks off, but he was fine. Better than the last one. Um, so he, I only saw him really quickly, but he did answer my questions. So he's like, well, you need to go see a neurologist. Like, okay. So he refers me to a neurologist. And then I had like an appointment two weeks later. So I go see the neurologist and they do the EMG. And I was nervous about that because it, it's shocks. You're being basically electrocuted, of course, at a low vo a low of voltage. But um, so like I had my hand like this and I don't know what he was doing. I didn't look, but it would jolt my hand and it was unpleasant, but manageable. I've had worse. <laughs> so um, she came in, the assistant did the shocking and... She came in to do a muscle test where she stuck a needle in my muscles. And that came back normal, but the EMG, the shocking, came back. She came in and she said, you have, she goes, you must type a lot. And I'm like, well, not really. I mean, I had an office job for eight years. I did data entry, but I haven't done that job in years. 2013, I think, was my last year at this job. So I go, well, not really. I mean, I do paper crafting, but for someone it's, to come on so quickly, it's just weird. So she said it is severe carpal tunnel syndrome. The right hand is worse than the left, which I could have told her that. So then I went back to the orthopedic surgeon, and this was this past week, and we scheduled the surgery. The surgery is for May 16th, so I'm going to get it done on my right hand. I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't know if I'll be successful, and, you know, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm trying to pre-film. Like, I want to pre-film, you know, my obligations, left from Lizzie. Um, I won't be able to pre-film that because I won't get the kit in time, but Spellbinders, you know, those are going to be challenging. Those are my commitments, and granted, I could you know, discuss with Lizzie and Spellbinders and say, I need to take this month off. Okay. But you know, I'm still, I'm still, I'm not going to do that. Uh, so I'm trying to pre-fill my not too shabby cards. That way I can just schedule them and then I will be late or I won't be late, but I'll be towards the end of the deadline with my Spellbinders and Lizzie 10 cards, one kit. So, you know, I'll still, but that's probably all the videos I'll have. Like I said, I'm going to try to pre-film, but I really haven't been in the mood to make anything. We'll see. So the 16th is my surgery. The surgery, for those that haven't had it, and if you've had it, let me know if your process was different. So he said he would do both hands, but that I would need someone to help me go to the bathroom and stuff. And I just, 
I know it's not a big deal. My husband would do it, but I just don't want him to have to help me go to the restroom. That's a little bit much. I mean, if I am so unable to do it, okay, but <laughs> if I have a choice, I really prefer not to have him help me use the restroom. Um, so I'm just getting the one hand done. That way I'll at least have one semi-good hand to work with. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll still need help getting dressed and stuff like that, but whatever. I'm just going to go to Walmart and get me some cotton shorts and a hoodie, and that's all I'm wearing, uh, you know, during recovery, because I can easily pull them up and whatever, take them off, whatever. So it's the 16th, and then six weeks or so later, I'll get my left hand done. So my unboxings will probably be one-handed. <laughs> And, um, you know, I don't know what my card making will be like, but it'll just be a slow process. I have no doubt that I can do it. And I know um, my husband would help me, you know, put things together. Maybe he'll make an appearance, his hands at least, in my video. I don't know. Um, but I just wanted to give those that were asking an update. So if you follow me on Instagram, I uh, posted a while ago about my hand, my right hand was in a brace and it was like on fire, it was hurting so bad. And what that brought on, what brought it on was coloring when I was making a card. So this water coloring is not as bad, it's just like holding this is not very pleasant. I bought these off Amazon, these like eggs, and they're marketed toward kids but also um, people with arthritis and they've helped but this is like foamy and it helps when I'm writing but when I touch it with this hand I hate the way it feels like the sensation is very uncomfortable so it's weird I don't know but and then I bought do you like my $25 ring at uh, from Amazon <laughs> my real wedding ring doesn't fit anymore because my hands even though that one doctor said they're not inflamed, I think they are. So this ring is actually two sizes bigger than my wedding ring. And my wedding ring fit fine before this whole mess. So, I don't know. I wanted something to wear. But, anyway. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, I wanted to talk about, um, so... Toby, one of my subscribers, she had commented on one of my videos and she said, I don't know when you post a video. I only know you post a video when I get an email. So that, you know, I always heard that on YouTube, like if you don't, you don't necessarily see all your subscribers posts, which I'm like, how can that even be? I don't know. So, um, I'm usually not one to say, oh, subscribe, hit the bell, but hit that bell <laughs> so you're notified if you want I don't know when people in YouTube say subscribe hit the bell uh, that doesn't sway me to do any of that but it does worry me you know my views have gone down substantially and my subscribers at the time of me doing this have been really weird my subscriber number it's like I'll gain a couple but then I lose five and then I'll gain one, but lose, and then lose three. So I know, like my all-time subscriber, I'm, right now I'm at 17,500, I think, around there. My all-time subscriber count is like over 20,000. So I've had quite a few people unsubscribe, and that's fine. Because I've unsubscribed from people, and you're just not my cup of tea anymore. And um, I, it's just really discouraging to see for the past couple weeks that that number hasn't moved and my views are like really down so I don't know what to do I don't know what to do it's just a lot of work and I guess it's I'm more sensitive to it because I'm working and it's kind of painful with my hands and of course I appreciate everyone that watches my videos but I'm not gaining anything so why am I working so hard to go nowhere I guess I don't know if you have a YouTube channel what have you noticed with your channel um, when I did my craft room tour video, I think that video is in the 90,000s, and that's a fluke. I know a lot of people that watch that video are obviously not subscribers. Um, so my views 
are skewed because there's like if I follow my graph there's like a huge arrow that goes up well that's because of the video that uh, craft room video and I know that's not a realistic number that was just a video that anyone can watch that's not a card maker so I don't know how are these bees looking I'm trying to get some wild honey see if I can darken up these edges I wanted to use my Arteza markers but I didn't because I'm afraid that will flare up my hand. I will say my Arteza markers, the coupon is still valid. And I say that on the markers, but it's actually any Arteza products. I've been very happy with the Arteza products. Um, the watercolor paper is great. Of course, my water brush pens are awesome. I'll, link, I'll leave that coupon code below to save 10%. I'm hoping when this video goes live, it's still valid. If not, I'll say either way in the video. I think the coupon code is valid till the 16th. So I don't know when this video is going to go live. So the surgery is only <laughs> 10 minutes long and it's so much prep. I hate it. Well, that's surgery in general. What color are bees heads? So the surgery is 10 minutes long and then they'll cut me right here. This doctor, this orthopedic surgeon said, we can, I go, do you do endoscopically or, you know, the full cut or whatever? He, he says he does both, but he prefers the old fashioned way, which would be cutting here. Because he said, if you go in, in endoscopically, if you're kind of wired differently, there's risk of cutting a nerve or whatever, but people don't want the scar. I'm like, I don't care about a scar. I got a scar across my neck when they removed my thyroid and I'm very proud of my scar. People look at it, ask me what it is. I love talking about it and bringing awareness to checking your neck and all that stuff. So I don't give two cents about a scar right here. So he cuts it here. Ugh, don't Google it. <laughs> I wanted to see an animation of how it, the surgery is. And yeah, yeah, that's gross. But um, so... I'm hoping my surgery will be in the morning. So my camera stopped recording. I don't know what I was last saying, but anyway, um, I hope my surgery, I think I was saying about my surgery in the morning. I hope my surgery is in the morning because you know you can't eat or drink after midnight the night before, but I have issues with them because I have to get my, since I don't have a thyroid, I have to see my endocrinologist every year and I have to do blood tests. And anytime I do a blood test, it's really a stressful because they can never get to a vein they I always say please just do the hand because that's usually where they have the best luck but they don't they try the arm first and it never works so last time I had to give blood was uh, well the last time I had to give blood four times they poked me they did both arms both hands so yeah I'm hoping that since I'll be in the hospital, a nurse will do it, you know, do the IVs, and typically the nurses know what they're doing. So I'm praying that they'll have success, what am I doing, with the IV, and they'll get it in the hand. On my second thyroid, so I had, for my thyroid surgery, I had my half of my thyroid removed, found out it was cancer, so then they removed the other half. And the second surgery, she stuck the needle in my forearm. No big deal, whatever. Talk about an awkward spot to stick it. So I was in my room, surgery's done, whatever, and the needle went through my vein. Oh my God, because I had, the machine kept going off. So my husband went over and usually you move the wire, the machine stopped beeping. So he went to go move the wire and it went through. Oh, it, I don't know what that's officially called, but it was so painful, I screamed. It was horrible. So I'm really nervous about that. Um, not being able to get the IV. And then, I mean, they will. They'll have to, but just, you know, take a few times. So, like, typically, in my experience, you have to take a pregnancy test before your surgery. And I don't remember doing that the first surgery. I don't remember. The second time, they're like, you need to go pee in this cup. I'm like, oh, gosh. How am I supposed to pee in a cup when I haven't drinking anything in 12 hours? <laughs> So that, and I think I was already IV'd up. So yeah, okay, be back in about 30 minutes. Um, so it's just so uncomfortable and unpleasant. I hate it. 
and you know it's only a 10 minute surgery so it's like all this prep just for 10 minutes and you go home the same day so that has me all stressed out more than the actual surgery because hey I'll be asleep <laughs> I don't care about that um I will say in like the first time I woke up with a excruciating headache the second surgery I told the anesthesiologist that and perfect the second time I was more alert awake um, no headache it was perfect so I'm you know worried about that that you know they'll give me something not wrong but just more of something I don't know how it works but that I'll get a headache I am going to mention it to them but I worry about that it's just a lot of stress and I know everyone has stress in their life but this is my current stress <laughs> So just to keep you updated, um, the videos might, you know, I said last time my videos are going to slow down and they maybe did a little, but not really. I'm like, look at me. I'm still kind of normal on my scheduling, obviously with one hand and maybe trickier, or maybe I should do a one hand series. I don't know. <laughs> are these bees looking good at all? I did look when my camera stopped recording. I quickly Googled this stamp set to see if these bees heads were yellow so bless anyone that has chronic pain in their hands I've had some people comment and tell me their experience and it's really you know we don't I'm not saying people aren't grateful I think so the majority of people are it's just when you go about your everyday life you tend to not think about things like your hands <laughs> or your feet or you know something that you naturally take for granted because you're not thinking about it it's just doing what it's supposed to be doing and since this it's just been horrible and I am in a lot of pain but I know people go through more pain and I just can't can't and don't want to imagine I'm going to take this broken china and make these wings so this principal I met with today he was very nice um, it was like a panel Sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place with topics, but I'm trying to think of things so there's not dead silence. So there was a panel of teachers. Typically, I do better one-on-one, -on -one, but it was a panel. And, um, you know, they were going around the room asking questions, and I was trying to answer. And then it was the next person's turn, and he, like, completely jumped in before she said anything. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if that's a good sign or not. The interview only lasted probably 13 minutes. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. And it's like, well, maybe I can just go get a, a retail job or something. But then my hands. So it's like, I can't do any of that because I'm going to be out of commission for a while. So I don't know. Water these down a little so I can make them blend. So the other day, you know, I have two cats. The other day, I won't say the other day, probably a month ago, I was trying to go to sleep. It takes me forever to go to sleep. And I woke up to horrible sound. You know, like the row, row, row. Can't do it too loud because that when I do it, it freaks out my cats. And I'm like, oh my God. So I woke up my husband and I said, the cats. And they had gotten in a fight. And you know, these girls, it took them a while to warm up to each other. Well, the one I had first took a while to warm up to my second one. And... They were getting closer each day. Like they would lay in the bed together a little bit longer, whatever. So anyway, go downstairs. There's pee on the floor. Something had happened. My older cat had a scratch below her eye. We didn't know who attacked who, but we knew that there was something outside that caused it. So we watched, we have cameras. So we watched the camera and saw a cat had come up to the sliding glass door. Now my older cat, she loves looking out the window at nighttime because God knows what she sees out there. <laughs> Bugs, bats, whatever. So she usually hangs out there at night. So yeah, a cat came up to the window and I'm assuming she's the one that went crazy on my other cat. So it's redirected aggression is what we learned where she couldn't get to that cat that was by the window so she went after her buddy forgetting oh this is my friend so we basically and this went on for three weeks we had to 
separate them and basically reintroduce them. Talk about a pain in the rear. It was very stressful, but has anyone else been through that? I don't know. They're fine now. Sometimes Millie, the cat that we think attacked my other cat, will look at her funny and we're like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but overall, it's fine. Like we leave, we leave them out alone when we leave the house, whatever. But we've completely, and it breaks my heart, we've completely cut off any view outside downstairs so like we close all the blinds at night and just at nighttime during the day it's fine but at nighttime and we put so like Home Depot sells this faux stained glass it's like a cling looks like stained glass so we got a really pretty pattern that you can't see through and that it looks very it's beautiful if it's used properly but it looks real tacky because it's on the bottom portion of our sliding glass door so we got that so they can't look out that window and we close it with the curtains because we have a cat tree so they at night we close it with the curtains and at night we close all the blinds and sometimes Millie the older cat will be sitting on the bench looking at the window the blinds are closed and it is the most pitiful looking thing in the world it makes me so sad but Oh well, they seem to be doing okay. We just kind of open all the blinds upstairs at nighttime. So they have various places to look out. Because as long as the cat keeps it, you know, if they see a cat and it's at a distance, it's okay. It's just in the camera, that cat came right up to the window. Woo! I'm going to do a little candied apple. Oh, I will be having another de-stash um, in June. Right now, pretty sure the sale is still going on. All my D-Stash stuff is 20% off, I think, in my Etsy store. So if you want to check that out, see what's left. I think for my next D-Stash, I'll be doing, not everything will be a mystery box, but I'll be doing some mystery boxes. I think those were a success. I hope everyone that purchased one liked them. I only have like seven. Um, but I try to include a good amount to make it worth, you know, the money. My cards are 50% off. Really need to move those again. I'm wanting to do some craft fairs. Because I did sell some cards. I usually just sell my st the things I embroider or so. Um, but I did sell some cards, so that was nice. Cards. That is, it sounded like I said cars. Anyway, I don't know how long this video is running but we'll probably end it soon. I guess I won't make a card. I feel like this was weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, hopefully you were just crafting with me and not really paying attention, but there are my bees. Um, I'll probably make, this will be my one of my uh, pre-film videos. I'll make a video with these bees and I will use the Honey Bee Hive Stencil and Mask. It's four sets and then this honeybee cards and this has been out a while I, I remember seeing Nicole Spore do this and it was amazing so I'll list all this but um, I won't make a card so stay tuned for that card I'll have it come out in a, in a little bit and hopefully you guys enjoyed this I don't know I hope it gave some of you that were asking about my hands an update so I'll have the surgery the 16th and we'll just play it by ear as far as videos but if videos kind of go away for a few weeks, please know that it's just me recovering. I don't think the recovery is too bad, but um, I know I'll have to take it easy. I'm going to almost be afraid to do a lot with this hand, especially with a, an incision that's right here. Um, anyway, so I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I don't feel like I say that enough. Um, I've been really getting behind on comments. I really want to start replying to a lot of comments more. Um, I try my best to love them so you know I read it. But please know if I don't reply and I just hit that love button that your comments and support are appreciated. You're watching my videos. That means a lot. And if you are a subscriber, hit the bell. If you're not, subscribe, hit the bell. See if that makes a difference. If you're not seeing all my uploads, I have no idea. <laughs> How do you know you're not seeing people's uploads? And then some people say the bell doesn't even work, so I don't know. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!